So the first thing you may have noticed is that I have built the interior of a small weapon shop. And even though there's a guy back there, I can't get to him yet. What we want to do here is add this invisible actor right here, the pedestal. And we just boom, click it, put it down. So that when we walk over here, we can interact without, you know, having to jump the table and whatnot. Okay. Now, since he is a weapons dude, the first thing we want to do, let me go back to the inspect, is give you an option. So we're gonna press, I've already named him shopkeeper, by the way. If you haven't, it would probably help a lot if you renamed him something like shopkeeper or weapons guy or something, you know something that makes it easier for you to keep control of your screenplay. So we're gonna say shopkeeper gives choices for. So what to ask? We'll have him say, ah, welcome to the weapons shop. How can I be of service? Next. So where it says possible response, this is gonna be where we put the weapons one at a time because this is gonna be the selectable items that the people who play your game will be able to make the choice. So for our first one, we're just gonna have Rusty Dagger and add another response, <laughs> um, Dagger, finish. Shopkeeper gives choice for, ah, oh, welcome to the weapon shop, how can I be of service? You can choose Rusty Dagger or you can choose Dagger. Perfect. Now I'm a little bit of a neat freak so I always go a little above and beyond, I want to say. <laughs> and I'm going to do some indents because it helps me in my mind keep track of everything. But you want to be careful when indenting and making multiple lines. You want the screenplay to be able to read through correctly. And I'm not going to pretend I 100% know how to use the screenplay, but I do know that the way that I do use it, I get the results I want. So I got to be doing something correct. All right, moving on. So if we go in there, we're like, hey, I want to buy a rusty dagger, then he's going to say something like shopkeeper sells interesting choice. Like he's judging us, bro. You're the one selling it. That'll be one gold. <laughs> okay. Shopkeeper says interesting choice. That'll be one gold. So what we need to do is make an option for if we don't have that money. So basically, go to insert action, click on our hero, because that's who it's going to be affecting. And we're going to say, let's, let's see, we're going to click this little gem right here. Check if a number is smaller than the given amount. Perfect. That's what we need to do. Hero number of, the name of this particular number is gold smaller than one because we got no money or broke next so this is how the screenplay is going to play out if our character does not have any gold this is what we're going to get told shopkeeper's going to be like sorry pal you don't have enough gold all right so let's just test this out because currently our character has no gold so we're just going to walk up Welcome to the weapon shop. How can I be of service? We want the rusty dagger. Interesting choice. That'll be one gold. Sorry, pal. We don't have enough gold. Yeah. We knew that already, but it's good to see that the screenplay is working. So, what I want to do now is add another character. Uh, we'll just add her. Give her a quick name. Something small, like Nola. Now we need Nola to give us some money because it's going to help us test out things with this guy. Uh, but we only want her to give us one gold for now. So we're just going to be like, what do we name her? Nola. Nola says, hey there, I want you to have this. So kind of her. Are we? Vera receives token gold. Very important. Hero number of gold. And I'll be doing it both ways just because I don't want to alienate anybody that doesn't necessarily type all the time like I do. I literally type all day, so it's easier for me. 
but I will be doing, you know, some clickety click click so that y'all can see how you, how else it can be done. Hero number of gold increases with one. And then we want our invisible actor. See, look guys, I'm doing it. Invisible actor says, you gained one gold. Now, where you have tokens or if your number is increasing, those don't show up on the screen. That's just for the, the screenplay for the internal game to know. And it increases your value, it just doesn't tell you it does. That's why I like to use the invisible actors to help tell you what's going on with you. It's really helpful. All right, let's try this. We're gonna go up to her. Hey there, I want you to have this. You gained one gold. Okay, now that we have our gold, let's go ahead and make that else option. We're gonna be able to buy this rusty dagger. So the first thing we want to happen is we're gonna have our invisible actor say, you hand over one gold. Exclamation. And we're gonna say hero number of gold decreases. Oops, decreases with one because we're paying him. So we need to make sure we subtract the gold so that this is a fair market standard. That's all right. Hero swing weapon ability. Damage becomes zero. So the reason that I do that is to zero everything out so it's all level playing field. Even though I already had the character set to zero, what if she were to pick up a different weapon first, you know? I've got to account for that. So every time she loses a weapon or trades one, I'm going to have her lose the weapon and the attack points. Um, it especially comes in handy with like enchantresses. Uh, that way, if your weapon is 12, then you're going to have 12 attack instead of not knowing how much you do or don't have or having the number keep going up exponentially. It's not fun when all you can do is win and decimate on accident, you know? You want to make it a bit challenging. You want it to be fun. We'll say, hero loses token dagger. Oops, let's do that correctly. Dagger. Now, the reason that I do that one is for the same reason that I have the weapon um, ability damage go to zero is because I want her to only be able to hold one weapon at a time. Even though she doesn't have a dagger yet, there's a possibility she could get a dagger first and for whatever reason, want to get a rusty dagger. So I just like to account for all of that. And then hero receives token, rusty dagger. Excellent. You have to think like the people who play the game, not just the people who make it because they can't see all that we do. They take hours and hours of work and they play it in five minutes or less. So, insert <laughs> invisible actor one says, you see rusty dagger. Okay, I don't know why I capitalized that. You receive rusty dagger, exclamation. We're so happy about that rusty, <laughs> rusty dagger. Now, since you have the weapon and you have the token of the weapon, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our swing weapon ability. Hero swing weapon ability becomes active. Yay! So what that means is when we're on here, you see like in this corner, now if you have attack on already, or if you are active, I'm sorry, not on active, then right here you see a little sword. And um, if you don't have it active, you won't. I personally like to use the weapon shop to make that activated. Like there's no reason to have that button if you don't have a weapon yet. So now that ability is gonna become active when you go through the screenplay. Not only is it gonna be active, but our hero swing weapon ability damage increases with two. So basically what this means is when you get this dagger, your attack is gonna go up by two. So after that, we want to know how much attack we just got from that guy, right? So invisible actor one, oops, actor one says your attack is raised by two. This lets the character know, hey, you now have plus two attack. Go out there and kill some stuff. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little wonky. You guys bear with me. So we're going to end this little transaction with shopkeeper says, come back if you need anything else. 
cool. So now we're gonna test the screenplay and we're gonna see if we get a dagger. Before we do that, I want us to step outside because this is how we're gonna test it. Okay, we don't have the weapon yet, but we're gonna add some things for us to destroy. So I'm gonna add a B here. I'm gonna add the B here. Now, since this is for training purposes and not the actual game, I'm going to switch off, move to enemy, patrol, and bull rush. So basically, that thing is just going to stand there so I can see how many swings it takes to kill him. But if this were a real game, I would definitely not have turned any of those off. So I'm just going to set his max health to two so that one swing kills him. And then for this guy, this little enemy, we're going to switch these off again. And we'll make his health, let's well, two times three, six. So it should take three swings to kill that guy. Now, right now, we don't have a weapon because we couldn't afford it. We go up to these guys. We don't have health right now. This video is about being able to purchase weapons from a shop, not necessarily health yet. So don't fret. That video will be in the future. All right, let's go inside and get this weapon so we can test it. So we already got our one gold from our little green haired friend in the corner. We're going to select rusty dagger. Interesting choice. That'll be one gold. Moment of truth. You hand over one gold. Excellent. That means the screenplay read it and knows we got one gold from that green haired chick off to the side and we are good to go so far. You receive rusty dagger. Your attack is raised by two. Come back if you need anything else. Perfect, you guys. Look, see how the M came up and we have the little sword right here? Oh yeah, we're ready to deal some damage. So now we should have plus two. If our attack is indeed two, we should be able to hit this guy once. Oops, I missed. <laughs> and he dies. And then this one we should be able to hit three times. Perfect, so our attack really is plus two, which is awesome. We just decimated. All right, let's click on this guy. Exciting, right? It's super fun when you see like all this work that you put in backside and you really get to go play it backside. <laughs> this sounded so weird, you guys, I'm sorry. All right, so what we're gonna do now is copy most of this over so that we can have a choice of weapons. So since that one was over, I'm just gonna do that, bring it up a little bit. And we're gonna go from right here all the way to up here where it says shopkeeper says. Interesting. Actually, since spaces are important, just copy over all the spaces. But then come over here and erase the extra spaces before you paste. Perfect. Okay, so now what we have here is we know that the top the rusty dagger works and now we want the dagger part to work and since we copied and pasted it it's gonna go through but we want to change the information a little bit just to kind of keep it interesting um plus it's not going to be one gold for a non-rusty dagger so we're gonna up some prices shopkeeper says we'll have him say great choice this time great choice that'll be five gold so if hero number of gold is less than five, <laughs> I put 15, you guys, <laughs> is less than five, shopkeeper's gonna say, sorry pal, you don't got enough gold. Okay, so let's change all of these where it was saying one and all that stuff before to five. Hero number of gold decreases with five. Hero swing weapon ability damage is still gonna become zero because we don't want to add it on to what we had before, right? So we're gonna leave that. Hero loses token Rusty Dagger, because we had that before, and we're going to receive the token Dagger for the new one. And then the invisible actor is going to be like, you receive Dagger. We're just going to take the word Rusty right off of there. Hero Swing Weapon Ability becomes active, in case it wasn't. Hero Swing Weapon Ability damage increases with... What should it be, guys? Five? Sure, why not? 
I was actually thinking four. I'm going to do four. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Invisible actor says your attack is raised by two. Except it's not. It's raised by four. The shop people may be like, come back if you need anything else. Let's press OK. Test it out. Shoot stacker. Great choice. That'll be five gold. That's right. We're broke. So we can talk to this girl five times. <laughs> Now, I could have just made another character and had him give us five gold, but I kind of want you to see the importance of values and how they do go up and they do go down. So. Ah, welcome to the weapon shop. How can I be of service? We'd like that dagger, please. Great choice. That'll be five gold. You hand over five gold. Excellent job, everybody involved. We are on to phase four. I don't really know what phase we're on, but I'm just happy it worked. <laughs> you received dagger. Your attack is raised by four. Come back if you need anything else. Thanks for watching. I really hope this helps you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those things. I plan on making many more videos in the future. And even though I'm like a design based person, just game design as a whole, even from the screenplays to the set, I love every aspect of it. And I can't wait to make more videos and games and see all of your guys' games. So thanks for sticking around, you guys.